welcome to another uh, Saturday night with me here, Peter Driver. Hope everybody's keeping well. Great to have you all on with us there again. Uh, how was the hangover, Patrick McCarthy? Uh, yeah, it's not too bad there now. It's it's nearly gone, thank God. Uh, we're at Mark's wedding on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> it was right crack, right crack. Um, how you doing, <coughs> Nigel Haynes? From uh, Peter Wadden's on there with us as well. How we going? Gary Hogarty, good to have you on with us there as well. Ken is on with us. Jamie Conway, how are you, Jamie? Jamie was at the wedding as well. <clears throat> Anthony Bolton, good to have you on with us there, Anthony, again. Um, who else have we got there? Um, great to see so many people back on. Martin O'Rourke, hope everyone's had a good week. Um, so I was away all week when, when, up, up in um, Leitrim. We did manage to squeeze in a bit of pike fishing. Um, we, we haven't managed to, how you doing James Kavanagh, we haven't managed to get it all up on the Pescari Club yet, uh, but we'll get it up now over the weekend, hi John Fern, uh, we'll get it up over the weekend, or, or over the weekend, yeah, we'll get that footage, or the pike footage, uh, how you doing Kevin Marr, Hugh Flavin, good evening to yourself, Chris Oliver, good to have you on there, hi Dylan from, from Wales, um, yeah we'll have the pike footage up on the Pescari Club there, um, this weekend and we're back doing our extra our, our live shows on Pascari. Hi David Bahana. Uh <laughs> Jamie, hey, you learned your lesson there, so Jamie. He's never drinking whiskey with Darius again. Um but we'll have a, a live fly tying back on this weekend. Actually, uh how you doing, Jonty? Uh we will be tying with Deer I'll explain that now in a second. But Jamie, this week on the Pascari Club, we're gonna cover um everything you need to know about Wales and for the Welsh tea and the Grayland. So I'll, I'll stick up, um, how you doing Eugene? Uh, I'll stick up a post about that in the club. Club has been going great folks, thanks for everyone for the support. Uh, hope people are enjoying the bits we've started with. Yeah, we have a lot, a long way to go and a lot of momentum to build. Um, but um, yeah, it's been a great, a great start and um, yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. So tonight <coughs> is a bit of a technical kind of night in, in a way, you've got three cracking patterns here for you. Um, yeah, Martin, it's not too bad at the moment. No, it's not too bad. Hi, Chris. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, it wasn't so good maybe yesterday morning, but today now it's not too bad. Uh, getting getting over. It was good crack. Great wedding. Great wedding. Everyone had a great time and all went off well and everyone's happy. So it was a good wedding. Um, but so tonight, I, I get asked a lot about deer hair. People having problems with deer hair, flaring too much, uh, different things like that. What types of deer hair to use, what types of flies or what type of tying they're doing. Um, so I said, look, at tonight I'll do a um, three patterns that'll cover as much technical deer hair work as you're going to need for most of the stuff you're ever going to do okay um, we'll talk a bit about different types of deer hair as well you know you've got all the different types of deer hair. there's a black that's a belly you can see it's quite large quite rugged uh, okay for spinning larger flies and stuff like that but it's it's um, not something you use for comparison or anything like that or maybe even um some of the finer stuff on wings and stuff like that there's a kind of medium that's from the <coughs> the neck and the back of a deer uh that's hens they, they always do a lovely soft deer hair and it can be quite um <coughs> how you doing dominic um can be quite versatile quite quite good and then you go to the kind of the short finds really stuff for comparison smaller um stimmies and things like that i use a lot of that stuff for as well so we'll, we'll cover quite a bit in the deer hair how you doing ted uh if you have any questions by all means shoot them across i'll do my best to get to them um don't forget to share the stream if you share the stream you're in a chance to win tonight's flies and the tree i've already tied before i came online dave will be along with his question and for tonight's prize we got our lovely new rod holders Okay, these are rod protectors. Uh, these are these are absolutely brilliant. I've seen these in action over in Canada and I'm oh, so impressed with them. Um, and basically, so for example, if I'm switching location, I'm getting back into the car. Well then, what I do is just break the rod in half, shove it up into this. It stops from all getting tangled up and stuff like that. When I feel, when I, when I get to where I'm going, take the, the rod back out, just put it back together and um, really, really convenient uh, rod holders or rod protectors sleeves. Um, really, really good job. Super, super impressed with them. Uh, when I say when I saw them in Canada, so we have them now in stock. But I'm giving away two of those tonight. Uh, hi, Michael McGovern. How you doing? Um, Giuseppe from Italy. How are you keeping? Hope you're keeping well. Great to have you. I'm just Colin McGarrah's on there as well. Good to have you, Colin. Uh, <coughs> see you soon, uh, Mike. Mike is out from New York this week, so see you on Tuesday. I think Mike or Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, whenever you're down. But uh, yeah, so dear hair. So I say a lot of people ask me a lot of questions about deer hairs. It's one of those, it's, it's like clean cameras. It's one of those constant reoccurring questions. Um, and I said we'll come. We're gonna start with a, 
a, a see through fly that I tried an, a number of years ago for, for a guy um, down south and it's a, it's a lock style fly but I'm sure it'll be quite good on the rivers too but it's a half hog Okay, so we all know sedge hogs. Sedge hogs is where you're putting the deer hair kind of mohican style up the full length of the body. A bibio sedge hog or a claret sedge hog is a, is a crack and lock style pattern. Well, this is a half hog version. Okay, really, really good fly. And um, it just goes through. How are you doing, Johnny Bren Brennigan? Um, it, it goes through just the technique of doing the hogging and the kind of deer hair we use for that style of wing. Um, and it just gives an opportunity to talk about laying down the wing so it doesn't flare too much on us. We don't want that wing spiking up off us. Um, they sure are aging, yeah, they're so handy. Yeah, they're, they're great jokes. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, have a bit of black thread. This is a size 8 Camazan B175. And uh, I have a bit of black tines. Um, how you doing, Darius? How was the head, Darius, after the wedding? Um, I'm putting on some golden pheasant tippets here that's simpler fly 80 wax thread by the way and we're just going to tie those in there secure them in on top and wind down the thread not happy with that selection actually I might just pick another feather there folks bear with me for one second Looking for something with a bit longer barren because it's a size 8. Still alive, good man Darius, good man yourself, you're still alive. I think we all made it through. Mark was fairly rough yesterday, I can tell you. He was uh, a little worse for wear yesterday, but sure. I suppose it was his day out after all. Now, let's pick a fresher feather there. And we'll go again. Peter Ross is always a great um <coughs> it's always a great sea trout fly anyway. And brown trout indeed, and, and I'm sure this is a good brown trout fly too. Um great point fly in a good wave. <laughs> Dave said he had two pints of Darius and then bailed out. A bit of heavy silver wire. Make sure you tie that wire in well up the body so we don't have any bumps for our tinsel. And then we're going to get some um, jewel coloured mylar tinsel, silver and gold. And of course we want the silver side out. And we tie the body and just secure that in there. Start bringing your thread up as best you can. Get it form a nice level body coming up along see you don't get any bumps or humps in your miler. Sometimes I'll go back down over it and then go back up again, putting two to three layers possibly. Sometimes I'll tie it in it where it is now and wind it down and wind it back up. Um, but just for the show to keep it, keep it going and we're not here half the night. Because we got a bit of time to do. We got two other flies, and the third fly we're going to be doing is an absolute belter. Um, I, I really enjoy tying it actually. It's, it's a fair bit of tying it, but there's a lot of deer hair technique in the fly. Um, again, it's a lock style fly, so I'm just ribbing that up with that wire, making sure it's nice and well secured in. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, Dick Croak, how are you keeping? <coughs> John Johnson's on liver as well. Hope you're keeping well, John. So once I've got uh, my tail in there now and my silver half body, as you know, the, the Peter Ross is um, has a red, has a red um, second half of that body. But we're going to do it sedge hog style. Okay, so what I got here is a nice piece of deer hair. This is my own Pascari fly deer hair, okay? Um, it's quite long, but it's really dense, okay? It's it's a winter deer. So during the winter months, the deer hair gets quite heavy, um, you know, and, and it tends to, what would you say, nearly expand in diameter each each fiber. Where a summer shot deer, it will be could be a lot finer and stuff like that. So you don't get, no, even though this, some, some of the winter deer you get, 
it can have a lot of down and a lot of fur in here and it can be really pain the backside clean it out but you can even see with this one um, it, it's quite clean I got it cleaned out uh, it's a really nice piece of deer hair it also just sits very well <coughs> and it doesn't over flare on me so it makes it quite manageable and I use it quite a bit now stacking deer hair there's times I do it and there's times I don't Okay, deer hair stacker. Hi Cyril, good to have you on Minister. There's times I stack deer hair with a deer hair stacker and there's times I don't. Sometimes I like a bit more natural kind of um, shape to it. And with this particular wing, it's that case. It is the case where I kind of, you know, I slicked out a, se a section of my deer hair. Kind of coming square off of the, the skin of what I'm going to need. And I take that away. Cut it away. Always cut to the butt. I always cut to the butt of the skin um, and then just take away any little bit of fur that might be left in there I check the tips and once nothing's sticking out too massive I'd nearly go with that natural kind of shape root and I'm just going to put in a short I'm only coming back just beyond the body for the first installment pinch around and pull up okay so I don't pinch and pull down you pinch around and pull up um, this helps trap the deer in hair exactly on top of the hook but it also stops you from cutting through you got to be very careful of the threads you use for um, tying in deer hair you know um, and the pressure you put on you see once I release that because I tied around and pulled up it sits perfectly on top it doesn't over flare on me and it's not broken away there's not a whole, whole load of my deer hair falling to the ground okay and it's quite secure and that was only one turn of tread like as you can see it's it's quite secure um i won't fake <laughs> um take a chance i'll give it a second or third turn just to make sure but you can see how quickly it gets secured once i wrap around and pull up so basically it's in pinch between the finger and thumb wrap the tread around and then pull up um that's i find the best way of securing in deer hair small amounts here so it sits perfectly on top for me doesn't over flare and you can see straight away at that lovely low, low line wing there to start building this wing up because this is say a couple of stages to build this wing for the the dubbing for the remainder of this body we're going to use um <laughs> yeah that's right darius yeah the boys are heading off to the the grayland festival shortly unfortunately we'll make it this year so we're going to use a little bit of this is the biscari fly flash dubbing in red small small is more when it comes to this style of winging okay And we're just going to start with a little bit of um, the red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down over the deer hair. Just till I start back at the, where the body meets the, that's it. Where the silver body, just back to where the silver body is. And we start, we complete that process again. So again, I'll take my deer hair, I have it on my knee, just selecting out correct amount clean out any rubbish and then put it on top again bring leaving the tips come back almost to as you can see to, to, to the distance of the last one again wrap around some just came out there it's okay wrap around and pull directly up couple of turns to secure it in now I'm going to hold that with my finger and thumb on my left hand while I use my scissors on the right hand just to get in there and in one clean swoop get most of that out of there before I release and again we go back to our double and basically I'm just going to complete this process oh, a bit of a twist on that one there and get it secure That's not what you want happening. You gotta keep for a real good profile in this fly, you've got to make sure that the ear hair sits on top of the on top of the fly. I'll get in with the dubbing. And I go again. Yeah, we fished a couple of uh, canals up in um, around Leitrim and Mo Hill. Over the week when myself and Mark were up there. Um, water was a bit coloured. The Shannon was quite coloured. Uh, and all most of the canals that were running anywhere near it were, were quite coloured. There's water everywhere up in that place. Um, 
But we did manage to come across a canal, kind of a separate canal just outside Leitrim town, or village, and there was a bit more clarity in it. So we said, geez, this, this looks like a little bit more fishy to us. So we got in a fish and we had some great sport for, for um, an hour or so. It was late in the evening, we found that spot, unfortunately. Um, and we had some real good fun there. Got a couple of nice jack pike, lots of pulls, lots of follows, good action. Definitely a spot we're hitting again. I say all that footage will be going up on, uh, we just didn't have time between everything else we had to get done. Um, <clears throat> we didn't get time to um, put that footage up on the club, Scary Fly Club yet, but it will be going up this weekend. Dylan, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. For this particular fly and the way I like the sedgehog to look, uh, I don't because I feel if I, if I stack it, what I'd get then is I'd nearly get a straight line there or there, a straight line there or there, a straight line there or there, where this is more natural and it's more tapered. And you'll see when I wet the fly afterwards, you get that lovely natural tapered wing to it. How you doing, Thomas O'Sullivan? You get a real nice natural tapered wing to it, where if I do it um, stacking, and you'll see some sedge hogs that are tied by people, and you'll get that. You'll actually see it, you know, where they've stacked it, and there's nearly straight lines between each stack. It's, it's very clear, distinguished as regards the... Um, of the different segments of deer hair put in there where I find if you don't stack the deer hair for the sedge hog patterns and uh, this is a half hog by the way anyone that's just joined us well then you get a much more natural taper back on the wing and it is wing after all so you know it's um, <clears throat> it's I, I, for me personally I would rather not stack it on a, on a sedge hog wing back to my deer hair again I think is the next stage another small amount and again sedge hogs you know you don't rush them you take your time, there's a bit of time in them, you, know, you can get a bit fed up with tying in little segment after little segment, but um, it's, it's worth it, you know, when they're done right, a baby old sedge hog with, with a couple of legs out of the back, um, really are a, a nice fly, you know. Building up nicely there now. Now if we want that wing to sit down, <coughs> excuse me, if we want that wing or try and keep that wing sitting down, you can see that last little piece started to flare up a little bit, I mean, it, it's starting to climb a bit high, um, probably be higher than I like. What you do to massage it is you catch your wing, you push it forward and pull it back. You can see what's happening there. You're, you're basically putting a little crease in here. Now you can see my wing starting to sit down a little bit, okay. Um, you can massage your deer hair. If you're doing sedges and stuff like that sedge wings you know you can massage your deer hair back and forth and it gets it to sit down very good tip for elk hair as well actually it's just massaging it back and forth and then you get that to lay down um it's already waxed giuseppe already waxed straight yeah and there we have our, our wing in place now at the moment i'll put another small little pinch of dub in there um just at the head of that And that'll also help keep that, that deer hair in perfect shape for myself. Okay. Before I go any further, flip it over. For one, I'm getting a look at the profile. Getting a lovely clean profile off of that fly there. As you can see, the wing is sitting directly up on top. It'll swim quite nice. Get me dubbing brush. And now I'll just, do, I'll just brush out the dubbing underneath. For one, to get a little bit of that lovely red sparkle going up into the wing. And secondly, just to marry all the little segments I put in there to get a nice clean looking body on it. So just getting a nice little brush and just making sure everything's clean and tidy before we put the finishing touch to our fly. As you can see there now. Janty uh, Munjacked. I never even heard of it. Hey Jamie Murphy, good to have you on with us there. <clears throat> Last thing that's going to go on this fly. Okay, you got two ways of finishing it, okay? And I'm going to show you both ways. Uh, one, I've already done the fly in it, and then the second one is this way. Okay, you can just put a beard on it. We know that the Peter Ross would have a black beard. I normally use a bit of heavy grizzle, okay? With a nice grizzle. grizzle. This is just out of the back of a, um, the back of a cock cape, basically. I'll show you the cape there now. Uh, <clears throat> just a cock cape. And it's these large feathers off the, off the back here that I'm kind of taking out for this. Um, 
pulling, Kevin. It's it's a pulling fly. It's it's like a fry. It's for sea trout. Um, trout, I'm sure brown trout will take it. Even though I don't think it's ever been fished for brown trout. I know a few sea trout friends that fish it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just strip one side that down and create a little beard. Hold my fly upside down. And I'm going to put a little beard in there. Turn it back up. A couple of turns to make sure it's nice and secure. And then just get in there with the pipe and my scissor and just clean that out. Just using my left hand to hold my tread out of the way. I can get in there quite easily and get a nice clean cut to that. And use my tray just to tidy it up. And there we have a nice little beard on that one as you can see. I'll show the other the other finish um can't say I've ever came across Munchak. John T. Not that word anyway, maybe we call it something different, but whip finish. And a uh, little bit of varnish on it. And that's the, the that is the half hog wing style of the deer hair um, <coughs> for a Peter Ross and um, the other the other way of of doing it is hackling that okay you can hackle the front of it and that's the finish you'll get in not much in the difference um, but there's a little bit in the aesthetic look at the end of it that's that's the fly um, no, it is very good for sea trout. Anyway, I'd say it worked quite well on the rivers too, P, because you got that deer hair on the wing. Um, and you'll see when it's wet then, that kind of, it. Um, see if you can get the visual kind of through the camera. But, um, you get that lovely bit of red coming through. Up through the wing, you get a real nice taper back on. It's kind of coming together. You nearly want to run under a tap. But uh, <clears throat> you do, you get a real nice kind of taper back on the wing and stuff. Hi, Sarka. Um You get a really kind of nice taper back on that on that wing when it's wet, and it all comes together. So there's no steps in the wing, if you know what I mean. If you if you build that fly and you stack that deer hair over those four sections, there's a good chance you're going to have a very straight wing at the back because you've you've kept them all the same length or kept them obviously every step gets longer and longer. But if you haven't, and you've kept them all kinds of, you're actually in danger of of having steps up along, and you can see some of the, especially the stuff that's tied of tied of foreign. Um, in some of the factories they'd have a really very noticeable steps on them and, and I just I wouldn't even put it on the cast because energy where if you do more natural and not stack the tips um, you get a lovely wing like a really really nice It's and then you get that red flash dubbing coming up through the wing there as well I can see it I'm not sure if you can catch it on, if the camera's catching it right for you there but uh, <clears throat> really 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 good fly a bit of an idea how to do, do your deer hair wings <clears throat> play around with it um, doing kind of half hogs Really effective for mayfly patterns as well. I got a couple of mayfly patterns we might cover along along the year, um, along the winter months somewhere. Kind of half hog may patterns, and they're really really attractive looking flies and fish really well, especially in wind. But I know down south a few lads fishing that for sea trout on the locks, and they had great success over the years with it. Um, unfortunately, I don't get down there enough anymore to to give my experience on it. Um, thanks, Martin. But it's um, it's definitely um. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. It's definitely a good fly, all right. And it's a nice tie, like, you know, it looks really well when you're finished. It's always nice when you're finished a fly. You go, yeah, it looks really, really nice. Um, so there's that one, folks. Going to move on now, and we're going to move to a little river dry, a little sage, a little caddis. Okay, so again, you know, the good art, the G and H sage, a very popular sage, really, really good. Um, <clears throat> and again, how do, you know, practical ways, there's practical ways of tying it. Um, and I'm going to show you the style I use. This is one of the questions I was asked a lot about recently. That they're kind of trying, you know, people are having really struggling tying 14s and 16s in the G and H stage. Um, and how to get the body good and compact and stuff like that. So I said I'll, I'll do a version of a, of a fly that I fish quite a bit for the caddis and um, see what you make of it. So this is, um, hey Joe, Joe Hanlon's on there from Wicklow. Hope you're keeping well, Joe. <coughs> this is a, a neat little fly. Okay, so we're going to start off with our size 14301 the Hacko dry fly hook. 
and I'm going to start on by putting a bit of Kevlar. Very simple little fly, but this is so effective. And so easy. Now when I'm doing the caddis, or the kind of the good art style caddis, say the body, or if I'm even doing muddlers, and you'll see on the next slide when I'm doing the muddler head and stuff, how I use deer hair and spinning deer hair is far, you know, far more practical than say stacking the way we go in the wood traditionally. I know Barry R. Clark speaks a lot about this in his, his book Featherbending um, and shows some great diagrams and stuff really work, well worth a read and um, there's some great tips in there so basically what I do here is I so I buy in full deer skins I don't just buy in packets I buy in full deer skins and I strip down and I have zonkers as you can see there's a zonker of a deer skin uh, it's about three or four mil wide we even we have those in the shop as well okay and it allows me just to be really for one versatile with the way I can use my deer hair but also it saves an awful lot of waste because if I just want to use the tips as you can see along here where I've used some tips for some tying I still have all this section here which can be used for muddler heads and stuff like that as well and different kind of bodies and the likes of um, uh, what you call this uh, bomber flies and stuff like that so it's not a load of waste okay an awful lot of waste in deer hair and it's, it is messy stuff to work with so I can take out my tips and use them for whatever small mudders or whatever I'm doing and then um, uh, no worries Robert, well done Robert won the, the prize last week but uh, <clears throat> you know it, it's, it's a handy way of, of uh, tying flies and stuff like that with, with deer hair having a, a, a zonker um, and what, my other useful tool then in this time is the, of course my trusty bolt clip okay with steel blades um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my section here so it depends what colour so as you can see this is a full cross cut of a deer skin okay a roe deer and you can see we got nice light tan but as I move it across, it starts to darken up and darken up. And you can see even the tips and all getting quite dark. Okay, so it depends on how or what colour, how kind of what tan or cream that I want to do. You can see the length of that, that thing is, is 18 inches long. Um, <clears throat> depends on the colour I want for my um, caddis. Okay, now this is a really light tan body is the one <coughs> that, um, <clears throat> this is a really light tan body. So I'm going to put my bull clip in here. And I can go back to this section that's already been cut. And I can put my bull clip in there and I'll take another couple of inches off of that. Open up your bull clip. Get it in there. Actually got it fairly well lined up. So say this is size 14, like so the, the amount of space you have in there, it's not a lot like. And now we'll just snip across. Leaving a couple of mils sticking out the top of my bull clip like so. Any loose stuff, pull it away. There's loads in that. Enough that to probably a couple of flies, but that's okay. All right, I'm short because I can see in through the, the bottom of my bull clip. I can see exactly how much I need, how much length I have. And we got a nice little, neat little bull clip full of deer hunter. Exactly the colour we want. You could, John, it'll be some snake. All right. Hey, Morris, how are you keeping? So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to split my Kevlar. Don't forget you can win all these flies tonight folks if you share the stream. We'll go back as we do on Sunday tomorrow and I'll uh, do the generator thing. Well, Deirdre does the generator thing for me and uh, someone will be into win these flies. So once I split my Kevlar, you've all seen me do this before with CDC and I've done it in previous shows with some deer and stuff. I slide in my bull clips and then just slide off the, the tread off the edge of the bull clip. And I catch my deer hair. Like so. I just massage it out, spread it out along a little bit. There's a lot of deer hair, or a lot of deer hair in that now, so I'm gonna take some of that away. You're better off catching more and starting with more than uh, be halfway or three quarters way through the process and then realize because there's no real back steps in, in, in tying a fly like this. Okay? So now I've got a nice little section of deer hair trapped between my two treads uh, <clears throat> keep that pressure on that don't um so i'm spinning just below the camera there i'm spinning the um the tread bobbin but i've got the pressure on my left hand between my finger and thumb not allowing the, the tread that goes up around either side of the deer hair spin because if that gets loose or bumpy what will happen is the um the deer hair will um stall fall to the ground okay so constantly keeping pressure let it spin away for a couple of seconds and um then you can just release it and you can see then it starts to spin up for me. 
Okay, we go again a couple of times. Take your time with it. And you start releasing and we start getting that spill on it. Okay, so we're getting a, basically a deer hair dubbing brush, you could call it. <coughs> Any extra lumps that are in there, I'll kind of work on it as I, as I let it spin up a bit tighter. Uh, plucking out an odd little bit here and add a little bit there to make sure it all spins up as even as possible. And then once I know it's got really well secured in, I really start to give it a good spin. No, Peter, I'll tell you what I have. That needle is just a normal needle, and I've stuck it into a little timber. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, some timber utensil or something, and just put a bit of resin in it. But no, it's just a normal needle, Peter, nothing in particular uh, for splitting the thread. So there you can see now what I've done there. So I've got a lovely little... Now, you can make that even smaller. That's actually big enough, like... So if I was doing size 16s of these, <coughs> I'd make that even smaller as regards to the, the length of deer hair I put in there. I'd probably put in there three quarters of an inch in length I snipped off. I could put in a half inch, even a quarter inch and make that much, much finer for they, say doing size 18s and stuff like that. And rather than you trying to wrap on thread and spin and thread around in a very small gape with a hook <coughs> and trying to stack it and get a good tight so you get a really nice finish in your fly, 10 times better. Hi Ronan Gibbons, I hope you're keeping well. Ronan's on there from YouTube. Yeah, that's our own, that's our own Kevlar, uh, Pascari Floyd Kevlar. So once I've got it in like that, I'll start stroking it to the side and then start winding. As I wind up the hook, just keep it all stroked back. So any deer hair bodies you're doing, this is definitely one of the easiest ways of doing it. Keep stroking the back, one turn exactly in front of the other. No stacking needed, no pushing or pulling or what I used to find is you know working on real light dry fly hooks. When I start stacking and pushing and putting pressure on trying to pack that dubbing, I damage the hook. You know, the hook would get bent, you lose the good shape of the hook. Come up along there. You see the amount of deer hair I got onto that little hook like. And absolutely hassle free. Stop just a bit short I still have a bit of extra deer hair on there. All I'll do now is just pluck that away. With your finger and thumb, just break it away. For a moment so I can get it um, an extra tie or two on this, on this thread to secure it in. Even just use the edge of your scissors just to tidy it up. And once I got my thread clean then hold never back with my finger and thumb, a couple of turns up there at the head, everything's nice and secure, no harm there, give it a quick whip, whip finish, don't cut it away, but just give it a quick whip finish, just so nothing's gonna fall, because we're gonna do a bit of trimming up now and a bit of um <clears throat> a little bit of trimming up and a bit of uh brushwork, okay? So now we, we've got our we've got our our uh <laughs> We got all our deer hair on there, so you can see we have a really nice lump of deer. I'll give it all a stroke back, a bit of a brush, making sure any of those bits of deer hair that are, might be misplaced in underneath, so they need to all kind of come tapering back. You only lose a few bits along the way, but that's okay, we don't mind. There's a lot in there. And now we can start shaping. Now you can use a, a flat scissors. Some people use a blade, some people use uh, curved scissors. I've always just used my flat scissors. My normal tine scissors is just what I'm used to. And take your time shaping it. Just get in, get the heavy, the heavy shape to it first, as I say, and then you can redefine it once you start seeing the profile. I think when it comes to caddis for trout, the profile is everything. Okay, it's what they see when they look up that profile. So I normally start clearing out the hook, just starting to get some shape to it. And then as I kind of go on, I'll fine tune it. And get a bit tidier and tighter. But we're basically just looking for that nice cat of shape to the fly. See how well stacked that is, like it's, it's lovely and tight, there's no gaps in there. For a small little hook like that. Um, sorry, it's actually because I pulled the... Um, 
I actually pulled the um, I pulled the device a bit a bit away towards me there for a second, just as I'm twisting around. I got I got this uh, out of position. Not the easiest to see here when I'm doing these shows because, as I often say to you, all the lights are facing towards me, so you can see it as clear as possible. Um, and I end up tying in the dark nearly because all the lights are in my face, and not the other way around where we'd normally have them, which would be. Uh, Facing down on top of the fly away from me. <laughs> Give it a little bit of blow there just to make sure it's. Give the bottom side a good under trim, a good trim, and then you can. Uh... Thanks, Morris. Uh, <clears throat> Leave some of those longer, the little bit sticking out the back, they're always good for the shape. It's not too bad, you can spend a bit more time shaping it, brushing and shaping it, but we can move on. It was the more the technique than the finish, I really want to show you. Um, but you can see as well by the finish, you know, it's well stacked, it looks good. Um, it, it's for a small little hook, it's really got, um, will I get that thing back in focus actually? I think I actually stick on my glass there for a minute. I think the weekend, my eyes aren't as, as sharp as they were last week. <laughs> um, not too bad there, I think you can get a fair gist of it. Um, <clears throat> Not the best shape in the world, but it's not, it'll do fine. It's to show the technique and show you the, the, you know, how compact and how easy you can get on that small hook. Just by spinning your deer hair and creating that dope deer hair brush. Okay. Um, and we can really, you know, if we were to do it the other way, I might even do it for a couple of seconds, maybe just, to, um, no problem, Chris. Yeah, it's a lot of deer hair gone onto that hook. You know, and really simple how, how it happened. Like if, if I say in a second for anyone that doesn't hasn't seen before, anyone that's starting out, you, you kind of the, the old way we used to always do it uh, for years. Um, that um, just a little bit of something on it. So <clears throat> what I'll do is a, before I finish I've the, the last piece of fly, I'll go back to my deer hair skin now, and this time I'll go for these lovely brown tips. I go for these nice dark brown tips here now and I'm going to put a little hackle on this, a deer hair hackle. So I'm going to select just the tips off a section. You don't need that much but I've just clipped in a couple of tips. Actually I might clip in a few more just to make sure I have enough. And then again exactly as I did before I'll just cut them off nice and short. Look inside make sure they're not too long. And there now I've got my little dark brown tips. Dave is on there, folks. The question is coming up. <coughs> <coughs> Thanks, Kevin. Keep an eye out for the question. You could win yourself two of those uh, new rod protectors. And again, I'm just going to complete that same process to put a bit of hackle. A deer hair hackle is nice on a dry fly, uh, especially on a caddis. Sometimes I'll even mix a bit of deer hair and CDC at the same time. And um, it'd be a lovely hackle. On the caddis. So this time I'm probably a little bit longer than I actually want. So what I'll do is put in my deer hair and with my scissors I'll just trim the bottom side, take a couple of mil off it while I'm still keeping pressure with the left hand. I can trim that up exactly to the length I want. That's perfect now. Spread it out to make sure it's even as possible, and then just complete the process that we just did before. Give it an old spin. Still waiting for the question, see if it was up. I am Gareth, yeah I am, I'm seeing all the, the questions and stuff there, I haven't seen any uh, <coughs> Yeah, what I'll do then is I'll hackle that at the top and again once I start it off, stroke it back clip 
clean up the eye. No worry, Morris. You can catch up, of course, as always. Anybody who doesn't catch up with the show tonight can always catch up with it tomorrow. It's on Facebook and it's on YouTube. And even trying in a nice little a nice little hacker like that, you can see the nice little taper. Um, all right, Dave is on there now, folks. What is the Irish record for... Oh, Dave, why do you do this to me? Uh, it's Latin anyway for something. Lictivus, Lictivus. And what river was it caught on? So there's a question now for all you Googlers. While well, I'm carrying on here explaining the finish of this fly. Uh, all right, yeah, Garrett, I can see all the comments come up on the stream. Here I have now, I can see all the comments, whether they come through YouTube or... Or, um... <laughs> come on, John. These <coughs> are <coughs> some lads are fair quick. Fair quick on them Google searches. <coughs> but I'm going to keep talking about the fly. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so here you can see we've got a nice hackle on that. A lovely hackle, lovely caddis. Um, really nice little sedge parron. Probably could do with another bit of trimming on that body. You can trim away on it there for another while. A little bit on the obese side. Not ideal, but it's okay. It serves its purpose to demonstrate anyway. But you can see the nice brown hackle. So, you know, one piece of deer hair. Um, yeah, they sure would, John. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but you can see one piece of deer hair, how, how easy it is to tie those flies. Um, you know, for anybody that hasn't... Just, just in case if anybody's on that hasn't really done much fly tying and they're, they're thinking about or they're terrified of doing deer hair because this is what they've seen of if they need to tie that fly. Um, I'm putting in the exact same hook and I'm going back to my Kevlar and um, no worries D then the school and Zand is there actually congratulations then the school and I don't think we've had a live show since last Sunday which was of course the uh, the Leinster bank competition where Dennis Goulin won it with an amazing 19 fish um, well done Dennis uh, second was Sean Kirwin and third was Sean Dempsey. Awesome fishing guys. So let's just say, for example, we're here, we're going to tie the exact same fly now. What the process most people will go through is they will cut a section off of their, their deer hair like so. They'll have a big pinch of it or a smaller pinch even if they want at whatever length. They'll have something like that. I'll even cut a bit off maybe to help and you'll hold that in a top you'll bring down your tread exactly where you want it's positioned you'll hold it in a top you'll give it a loose turn a loose turn and then you start to pull it and you see what happens it spins around the hook and then you'll get your dubbing needle or your brush or whatever you do and you'll clean it back a bit maybe give it another turn for good luck and then I'll start stacking all this back getting a couple of turns and tread in there and I'll keep completing that process till I get up to full size of the hook when I get up about halfway, I'll have to start packing it, making sure I get a good dense body. Nothing worse than when you've done this process and gone through this through the whole thing that um, when you go to trim it, there's gaps. Okay, so there's different ways of stacking that as well. You have those tools there. Um, you have those tools there that we we know no more. You can use a pen. You slide it in over. That one's too big. They're different sizes. That one maybe, and you'd hold it and stack it and push it and complete that process the whole way up. I say one thing used to get to me was when I'm especially fishing the smaller hooks, the 18s and 16s, is by packing that pressure and putting all that pressure back on the hook. There is there has been times where I've damaged the hook, I've, I've took the hook out of shape, and it's, it's fair frustrating when you finished it. Um and then of course you do all your trimming and stuff. So just doing um I don't know where is yeah, be good old team though, I think, yeah. I think we have a good old team there, Dennis, and uh yeah, it'll be it'll be great, Greg. Um, looking forward to that one. Um, you can see like the difference between the two. So when you're doing the dumb brush, you can make it much smaller, make it very easy to come up. You're not putting any pressure on the hook, and you get a real nice pack and a very nice finish. Um, same process if you're doing the likes of, um, if you're doing the likes of the um, the what you call it, the bomber flies and stuff for um, 
Yeah, you're dead right, Kevin. Um, if you're doing likes of bomber flies and stuff for salmon, you know, big stuff like that, that makes it so, so easy. Like, um, okay, so we're gonna move on to our final fly tonight. I think someone, I think Dave said that, sorry, I spotted someone with the right answer there. But again, I'll go back through the stream tomorrow morning. Um, the answer was, uh, Dave told me earlier on, I might as well give you the answer now because, um, the answer was uh, one pound, two ounces, and it was the river water, or the river black water. So I go back because no matter what stream you're watching, I'm the only person that gets to see all the comments come in from YouTube, all the stuff comes in from Facebook, all in the one stream. And the first person, I'll put up the time, the exact time, the first person won. Um, and who was the fastest on the trigger tonight? So uh, it was the one pound, two ounces, and it's... Um, The river Blackwater. So I'll go back over that anyway. Uh, <clears throat> right, so moving on to the last type. Okay, this has got a lot, this one has a fair bit of um, different deer hair techniques in it. It's a fly I tried a number of years back. Um, you might have seen some pictures of it. It's a daddy, a daddy, a deer hair daddy long legs. An absolute peach of a thing for um, top dropper in a wave in September. This is as good as it gets less. But there's a bit of tying in it, so we'll go through it step by step. Um, and it covers quite a bit. It covers detached bodies. It covers muddler heads and stuff like that as well. And shaping our muddler heads and what we want to do. Um, but the first thing we're going to do anyway, we're going to put in this this darn this, this needle here. As you can see, it's a curved needle. Um, John Johnson, Dace. Yes, thanks, Kevin. Dace. So I'm going to put this in here. Now, the reason why I'm trying this fly is because someone come on and asked me about deer hair detached mayfly bodies. Okay, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do a, a mayfly because I know I have a few mayflies in my head that I want to do later on in the shows. Um, and while we're on deer hair, and this deer hair daddy, because it also covers muddler heads, <coughs> I'd like to do this one. But if I was doing it, <coughs> excuse me, I'll drink a water here. If I was doing a, um, a mayfly detached body for deer hair, you'd use a curved hook like that. Or curved, um, that's just a needle by the sound shop. <clears throat> so, what we'll do is we'll start off with a bit of Kevlar. I'll just move it around a bit again. Give myself a bit of space to work with. Kevlar, I'm not putting too much pressure on the Kevlar. Keep it down from the point a little bit and just start working your way down. And like we've done with detached bodies before, we keep that tag in there. That's our security. Okay? And I'll bring my tread back up. Now, if I was tying a Mayfly body, now is when I'd mount in my boar bristle or whatever it's going to be. But it's not. It's deer hair. Okay. So now this you want something like deer hair belly. Something with a bit of length in it. But you also want to make sure you have strength in it. Okay. So it wants to be a really good quality um, deer hair. Because it's, it's going to be thin enough on the outer walls. Till I get it away from the. From the, from the um, until I get away from the needle. And we don't want that thread to cut. And that could be a common thing here what happens. <clears throat> is that when we're tying in this that we can um all right Gareth um now it seems to be okay in this side now I know what it is but uh, uh, <clears throat> so you've got to be careful here that we don't cut through our deer hair as we as we make all our segments coming up along um so make sure you have um a good long quality um a good long quality um possibly belly fur um, I'm looking up the different sections here. Um, yeah, you can either use the, the rump or the belly would be probably the best. The hock, which is up by the legs, uh, that's short and stiff. That's more used for like the comparadons and stuff like that. That's your short and fine. Um, it's a natural deer hair I'm putting in here. And I'm taking away the, um, this tool, Jonathan Matthews. It's a needle. It's a needle. Some particular type of a needle. Um, there you go, Kevin. I, I, I get me. You get me in a pack. Like you get a pack with all the other needles. Um, <clears throat> it's not net special. It's it's it's. I think it's for doing a, a upholstery or something. Maybe I'm wrong. If anyone wants to correct me there, anyone has an idea what that needle is called? Um, throw it up there. Um, so I, I select a nice, decent enough. Um, bunch of deer and for this I will stack okay for this one I will stack it just helps with that 
refining process to get this all lined up right. Basically I'll just pull them apart, just have a look. Any kind of the real smaller, if I spot a couple of smaller ones together, I'll just pull out a chunk. But I'm really happy, you just... God no. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold them in up there. I'm going to just need to just loosen that off a little bit and just get that to drop a bit for me. Make it easier. There we go. Hold it in up there in the needle. <coughs> couple of turns. One, two turns is enough up there. And a couple of loose turns down along. For just for a second, okay? We just got to attach the needle. What we want to do is get that to spin around the hook. Or spin around the hook, excuse me. Spin around that needle. Okay, so a couple of loose turns. I'm not letting any pressure on that tread, but the tread is enough there just to hold it in place that I can play with it. And make sure I get a good wrapping around that tyre. Um, yes, I think you're right there. Um, not doing too bad now, Dennis, yeah. I'd say now, if, if yesterday was the live show, it'd be a bit more comical, but... Uh, once I, once I played around and now I can see that I've got a good wrap around it on the deer here, I can then put a little bit of extra pressure and come down along and secure in the rest of that deer here, just the tips that I don't need, and come back up. Yeah, no, doing fairly well, Dennis, thanks. Um, now I'm just going to try and get the centre. And we're going to fold all them down. <clears throat> just taking your time not to put too much pressure on them I don't want them to break and it's fairly robust enough to hear but I want to get a nice clean and even shape to this body and just take your time so you're not putting any pressure but making sure I get a nice a nice bend on it there and I can hold it and now I can put in my first segment Two or three turns just to hold into place. If you want a bit of colour, um, hey Graham. Snow, oh, you can keep all that over there. If you want a bit of colour on that segment, you can colour in your Kevlar or you can use brown tying thread. It's up to yourself. Uh, I like the Kevlar because it just gives me a real good strong core when I'm mounting this fly. And there's your first segment in. It gets relatively easier after that. Once you've got it into that position, um, you're not really seeing that because I need to lift that up a bit for you there folks. I'm going to just, um, I'm actually going to drop the camera a little bit, it'll make it easier because it's just the size of that and then we can move it back up in a second. You can actually see what I'm doing then. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Mikey, Mikey was on, he had the Mrs. Ann on the Google. So what I'll do now is I lift up some of that deer hair till I can see the needle exposed underneath. And once I do then I'll slip that thread in there as best I can without getting it misplaced. Hold it back into position with my left hand again and then put another segment in there. So I'm not getting any kind of crossover um, thread lines coming on the exterior of the actual um, on the exterior of the actual deer here and then just complete that process again put another little bit of colour on there for myself lads are all down practicing of course the Munster the Munster Bank competition is on next weekend in Adair Springs the best look to everyone Mikey Foley, Dave Donovan they're all down there practicing Kevin Maher And I'm just completing that process the whole way up. If I was doing the Mayfly body, it'd be exactly the same. Doing the detached deer Mayfly body. Again, stuff like this is all about patience and time and just working your materials. It's worth it when you're finished to fly. Three or four turns every time. And probably have enough segments there but I always like to do one or two more just so it looks really it, it, you know in case I decide when I put up on the hook that 
I might want a longer body with it or whatever. So just a few extra segments would be no harm. So once I'm happy with that there, that'll do fine. <clears throat> then in school and is down there Monday, lads. Um, what I'll do is I'll just reach around with the whip finish tool. One or two quick turns. Don't pull it too tight. Just enough pressure to lock that in. That's it. Okay. You've now got your, your detached body formed on the, as you can see on the, on the, the needle and you've got the nice colour then, the kind of, you know, the natural colour of the dark tips coming down into the lighter tan, coming down. If you want, you can put a little bit of varnish on that now or just after you slip it off <coughs> on some of those little tread segments or you can flue glue it, whichever you prefer. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to dismount it now. Um, was nice round shape and there you have it there's your little deer hair detached body okay we're gonna make a daddy out of it <laughs> absolutely can it um <laughs> Dennis wants to know what's a, a bung there Robert Flaherty um so there we have our little detached body so if you're doing the mayflies you would have your your mayfly tails coming out there we will be doing uh, similar detached bodies for mayflies when we when we do a night or even two nights on mayflies. That many questions about mayflies uh, come in during the day is that um, we could be on it for two nights. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just bring up the camera bit and we're going to mount that onto our hook and just finish off this fly. Okay, so we're going to use a B100 size 10. I can find it. There we go. one of my favourite daddies for top dropper on a windy day because it's so light <clears throat> because the whole tying of the fly is so light when you see when I finish it, it, it you know you're just dabbling it you're not casting this thing you're, you're almost dapping it on a wind on top of the lake but it just flutters along and it picks up in the wind and drops back down uh, it's so light it's it's fantastic to see the way it swims um, it's not a pulling fly as such so I'm just going to put back on my Kevlar here Small amount of Kevlar, third a quarter of hook. And we're gonna take our body and we're just gonna attach that there. Get around around and pull up. Not too much pressure, a couple of loose turns first, get it into situation into place and then I'll kind of come up and down a little bit so I'm sure that's it's well stuck in place and I'll just trim back take out our core trim our core out cable art can be hard to cut at times and trim back that extra bits we don't need there And now I put a bit of pressure on it, really securing it in, making sure it's not going anywhere. And there we have our detached body. <laughs> Robert Flaherty there is just having a chat with Dennis about bungs and stuff. So, <sighs> blow off some of the rubbish. Okay, so next thing we want to do is put in our legs. I'm going to put four on either side, four possibly even five, depends, so it's a size 10. You want a good leggy and hang those legs out the back. You want this fly to roll around the wave. Now I'll splay those legs out in a moment. Just leave them in there for a second. And tights the body. I'm just going to change the amount of that hook. Now, there's two little bits to your hair there, annoying me. Now, for the wings here, um, I use I like to use a kind of um, John John's is there. Uh, how was this show, John? Um, I wasn't up at it myself now, but 
I haven't seen or I haven't talked to anyone that was as yet. So I'm going to use this honey grizzle. It's a lovely honey grizzle. And I really like this for the, the wings of my daddy's, especially this fly. Uh, so I'm going to take two hackle tips here. So you're talking about a drop of, of resin on the tread on the attached body. Mine seems to break away easy. You can, Chris. Sometimes I use flu goo, not really resin, because resin is going to make this fly very heavy. I want this to be as light as possible. Um, flu goo, or I, I'd, I'd use a lacquer. You know, that lacquer on a needle, because it soaks right in, and it doesn't really take away from it, and if you want. I can't, like, obviously, if you get a couple of trout on it, absolutely, it's, it's not the strongest fly in the world. Um, it's not going to last forever. But if you try and build it too robust, I think you lose the whole... Problem. Just this pattern now, don't get me wrong. Just this particular pattern. Um, because I want it kind of blown around in the wind. Really light. So once I got my two hackle tips in there, and we cut away our waste. I don't know, Red... Where are you talking about, um, Chris? Are you saying actually on the kind of... On the... the on the watch collars? On the... the, the now I'm going to split me, just bring my daddy legs back to the right side. Along with the wing. And I'll hold them all out together. Just using a needle to divide them up. Come on. He doesn't want to come out with this direction. Now let's get a couple of turns of tread. In behind them to kick him out. To kick him out away from the body. And get him into a real nice position. As you can see there now. Kicks them out lovely away from the body. Um, um again I wouldn't I wouldn't go resin, uh Chris. I I'd go maybe a lacquer. I have done lacquer, I use a bit of flu goo with a needle and just put a little tab on it there and again. Look at it's the risky run with these flies. They're they they're not the strongest flies in the world. Um that's why I leave the braid core in there, um, or the the the, the what you call a core up the up the center by not cutting away the waste at the very first when we added our trade because that helps it gives it a bit of strength because that core is going the whole way through the center of that uh, it does give it a little bit of help but unfortunately it's one of those flies where <clears throat> you see you can put a bit of lacquer in and that'll help but it's not going still you know if you're getting a couple of trout on it it's not going to be um, as robust as you'd like it to be now what we're going to put a muller head on that. <clears throat> Hard to see in dark. Alright, was it dark? Right. Um, so now we're going to put a bit of mother head on it. So we're going back now to our zonker, our, our dear hair zonker. Okay, as you can see it, I have it here. And I, I select in whatever colour I want. Now this time it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mother head, it's not a hackle like we did the last time. So why we need our natural tips, we do need them to be a bit longer. Okay. So you want your you want to stick the colour you want for the for the um, for the um the daddy. Which wouldn't be quite as dark as the tips of the last fly I did the, the caddis, but I can't, I don't want to go complete tan either. So I have my section away. And of course now as you see I cut away that section. And what I'm left with now is where is that piece that I cut away? That section there. So what I've left, I've still left all that, that deer hair material there from right down to the zonker. And that's perfect for doing, again, a caddis body, a darker caddis body and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not all dropping to the ground and being swept up and thrown away. You get a lot of usage out of your, um, your deer hair that way and saves an awful lot of waste. Now straight off the bat, once I look inside here, once I look inside here, I can see that these are probably just a tad bit too long. I was a bit too, bit too excited there. So what I'll do is I'll pull them out 
I loosen off my bolt clip. I can pull them out a little bit. Once I'm happy with that lint, I can trim them again. Taking half an inch off there. And now I'm happy that I've got it, I've got the right kind of lint up inside there. Yeah, you're gonna like the look of this one now in a minute, Dylan. Um and it's ultra light because there's nothing in it. There's no weight to the Kevlar, there's no weight to any materials that we've got here. On a breezy day on a real light tippet and a long rod, all you gotta do is hold this up and the breeze will take it out. And it just dabbles along the just dabbles along the surface. Again, exactly what we did before. Split the thread, put the deer hair into the clip in between the two pieces of thread. Still a little bit maybe on the longer side, so I'm gonna just do exactly what I did last time. I use my scissors, keep the pressure on the left hand, do not lose that pressure, the whole thing will drop to the ground. And I can just go along and trip off another couple of mil. On my waist ends. Deer hair is something you know, a lot of people do have less confidence to work with, and the only one way to get around it is go work with it. Spend time, um, thanks John, spend time with it and just, just play with it and things go wrong, they go wrong, till you figure out little systems and, and ways of doing your own thing. And different patches, like I have a full drawer of deer hair. You wouldn't believe how much deer hair I have. Um, little patches of it, this and that. And each little patch is for one particular fly because it's just the type of deer hair it is or, you know, it's um, it, how high it flares up or less it flares or whatever it may be. So, you know, you just gather it all over time. Um, Fenyard short and fine is pretty good. Uh, same for doing comparison, small fly work and stuff like that. Um, I do get all my own skins made and I use a lot of my own skins. Uh, we sell that in the shop as well in patches. Uh, it's it's really good and, and most of what I've tied tonight and all those anchor strips are, are out of that. It's very versatile, very soft and very dense in its... There's a lot in it, you know. Um, so once I spin it up... Sorry Robbie, again it's my fault. Once I spin it up... <coughs> we're then going to mount it on the hook one turn and then start stroking it back there's a larger section there that I don't want going in so I was able to undo it and just pull it out yeah, one more turn now and that'll be enough now so you can see I have quite a bit left over again it's all in there. What I can do now is I can just use my scissors, the edge of my scissors, and it'll just flake away. I need a large room so you can just pluck them out. No problem. It's joys of having Kevlar as well. Once you know you have enough, just stop. You know by the look of the fly. Absolutely, that's the thing. That's the thing, Graham. Yeah, absolutely. Is the is the mess that's left after it. So once I've got that cleaned up and I know exactly how much I need, holding back my deer hair, exposing the eye hook, a couple of nice turns in there. And then we're ready to finish. Whip finish it. Even you can see with that muddler head that I've tied in on that. Even as it is, I have oh, to it, that's okay. I hardly even have to touch it at that. You know what I mean? There's no real need now for me to go do a massive big cut. Just a couple at the very front. But it gives a lovely cloaking to the fly. And that's it. That's how I do most of my muddler heads, is using the dumb brush like that. Obviously shorter or longer, whichever whichever the fly calls for. But as you can see, 
it's um they'll all come back out into position then it was just when I was fooling around with the mother head that is um you can see the style of fly that you get I see someone on there a little tip come on column Okay, I'll do that. I'm not the Texas, as you know, Callum. So I take all advice. I take all advice on board. I'll do that. Um, but you can see there's that that fly. Um, yeah, I got a focus there now. Really, really nice fly. Um, that thing is some, some some something else to see going out across the wave. Really light. You can see the technique in the deer hair there of that muddler head. Um, really, really tasty for trout. So there we have it, folks. That's a Saturday, another Saturday night over, quarter to ten. Uh, a bit tired after shenanigans all week, so I'm going to leave it there with that one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I covered a few techniques there, a few people have been asking me about for the last couple of weeks. And uh, <clears throat> I hope he's got any, if he's have any questions, do um, do shoot them across to me during the week. Don't forget the Pascari Fly Club. If you haven't joined, do join up. We'll have more fly time sessions, live fly time sessions, where it's actually, <coughs> excuse me, much more interactive because you're talking to me and I'm talking to you. Um... And we have a live flight time session coming up this week. Uh, we didn't get one last week because I was away. But I'm going to make up for it this week. And we're going to talk to Jamie and a few of the guys that are heading to the Grayland Festival. Doing some pat runs and talking techniques with them. Also all our stuff. Um, <laughs> thanks Callum. Thanks Jamie. Um, also all our, our stuff there from the pike. Recent pike trips are up on the Pescari Club. And be up, the rest of the stuff will be up there the weekend. So uh, do if you're not a member join in. Have a bit of fun with us. And um, yep. And look at enjoy the week. Rest of your weekend folks. Have a great week. And I'll see you back here live next Saturday night. For another bit of flight time and fun. Um, take care everyone. And talk to you all soon.